So, using the Velgrad Error Manager for file descriptor tracking, um, I'm Mark, that's Alexandra. Uh, we did uh, uh, a talk uh, last year. Uh, we both work for uh, Red Hat and we uh, worked on uh, integrating uh, GDB and Velgrad uh, better uh, uh, because uh, Alexander works on uh, GDB, I work on Velgrand. And then we had another uh, bug to solve. And uh, we thought, well, we know Velgrand, so that's the tool to solve all bugs. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, uh, we, we, we saw this, this uh, uh, error in a program with file descriptors, and we thought, uh, 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 can we use Velgrand uh, uh, for that? Because Velgrand has a interesting error manager that kind of already does most of uh, the work for uh, error reporting. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, the overview of the Falcon Error Manager, uh, 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 events that can happen, uh, events that are errors, and what we want to do if we uh, uh, see those errors. Uh, uh, then uh, we show how um, uh, uh, the error manager worked for tool-specific errors and how we made it work for core errors or errors that aren't specific to uh, events uh, tied to Velgrain tools. Uh, and uh, then we show that uh, uh, file descriptors fit this perfectly. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, what kinds of uh, bad uses events uh, we can now uh, capture uh, with uh, Velcrand. Uh, and then kind of our question to you is, <laughs> uh, if you see this, what other kind of uh, resource tracking could we do uh, with uh, Velcrand that would be useful? Or maybe you want to <laughs> add that. <laughs> Um, so, quick recap, Velcrand is a, a tool for building tools, <laughs> uh, uh, speci specifically for uh, building dynamic analysis tools. Um, uh, it uh, currently detects various memory management and threading bugs. Um, the, uh, the whole idea of the Velcro tools is that it captures your whole program, translates it uh, into a uh, intermediate intermediate representation, and uh, instruments that uh, 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 representation and then compiles it back. So it's kind of a JIT that works on uh, well CPU code. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it tries to capture the whole environment uh, or to emulate the whole environment. So it intercepts system calls, signals, it makes all the threading uh, decisions, uh, it even emulates some of the proc files uh, uh, that you access uh, uh, and filters out uh, <laughs> the Velcroing parts of your uh, of what is running, so it looks like your program is just running. Uh, and it has various uh, tools. Um, the most famous and the default one is uh, MemCheck, uh, where you check all kinds of memory issues if uh, you're using undefined values or if you're accessing uh, uh, outside any uh, uh, block you ever uh, created. Um, you can do CAS profiling, heap profiling, uh, there's a threading debugger, uh, and there's even a non-tool which does no nothing. Uh, 
and we kind of now made it do something <laughs> because uh, uh, the non-tool didn't have any events and now it can have these core events uh, which uh, we now use to uh, 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 have all the these file descriptor events. Um, so the Velcro and error manager is uh, used to create events uh, and the main thing an event is, is a backtrace or an execution uh, environment for an event where it, it happened. Uh, then uh, some events you want to report uh, as er uh, because they're errors. Uh, it then uh, uh, renders the, the, uh, the error in uh, uh, a human readable variant or machine readable variant, uh, and you can uh, use it to uh, the user can use it to suppress ah, such a difficult word suppress specific issues, um, and it integrates. Uh, 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 with uh, TDB, so you uh, it it can uh, generate uh, a sick trap uh, on certain errors. Uh, for if you use the code, it's fairly simple. You uh, uh, have some functions for recording recording backtraces, the execution context header, uh, and uh, some for reporting uh, errors. Um, so first, uh, what is an event? An event uh, is, uh, well, you, you have different kinds of events. Um, so it's, it is uh, uh, a, specific, a specific kind, uh, uh, a, a memory allocation event uh, uh, is one kind. Uh, it can have an optional name or an address, uh, uh, and uh, like I said, the, the the most important thing is where did the event occur, the execution uh, uh, context, which is stored as a backtrace of addresses, uh, and we try to uh, show as little. <laughs> Uh, events as possible because if you show them, you have to uh, uh, do symbolizing and uh, maybe look up uh, 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 source files and code. So uh, uh, we we try to store the execution context as compactly as possible and then hopefully never uh, show it. Um, and optionally, events can uh, 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 bind themselves to other events. So a, uh, 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 a memory access event can uh, have uh, the event where the block was allocated, associated with it. Um, Right, so the, 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 the events are basically just integers uh, and you uh, can record the execution context uh, for an event if you don't want to uh, immediately report it as an error but want to uh, keep it uh, for later use. So an error is any event you want to uh, report uh, and you can report events immediately. Uh, this is something that went, went wrong now. Uh, then uh, uh, you call the maybe uh, record event, where you uh, uh, just uh, uh, give it the event uh, type and possible some uh, extra uh, uh, items like the address uh, or name uh, and uh, the error ma manager will associate a error context with it if it actually reports the event uh, and otherwise you have a 
uh, way of reporting events, probably at the end of the program. These are events that uh, happened and were not correctly resolved, like a memory leak, uh, uh, which you can show where you uh, uh, do, uh, do provide the original execution environment where it happened. Um, so the, uh, uh, the maybe record event uh, 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 takes, uh, uh, tries to really make sure that it only records events it has not seen uh, before, because that's um, uh, uh, showing an error is a expensive and b uh, if it is the same error uh, uh, people won't be interested in it uh, or they might be interested in it but uh, uh, it really helps if you only see one uh, uh, error in the same execution uh, uh, context. Um, I'll show a, 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 uh, an example in a moment. Um, uh, also, if, if we have uh, events uh, that are associated with the event, we uh, even if they are different, we still count an error as the same. Uh, uh, for example, if you read beyond the memory block, uh, it doesn't really matter uh, that where that memory block was uh, created if uh, the context is uh, the same. Uh, and optionally, you you. Uh, the, uh, uh, you can associate more things with an event, but it's actually not recommended because um, it uh, um, uh, uh, um, in in practice, uh, if you're debugging, you want as much information as possible, but you don't want to report over and over an event that is slightly different. Uh, uh, and if people really want that, they can show the different contexts later. Um, and finally, being the same is uh, uh, important for su uh, suppressions. Um, so when an event occurs, we uh, recorded and uh, just counted if we have seen it before. Um, uh, it can be ignored or uh, su suppress su suppressed. Uh, if uh, it isn't ignored or suppressed or it isn't something we have seen before, then we finally report it, uh, uh, which means uh, 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 presenting the backtrace uh, excuse uh, context in a human uh, readable form or machine readable form where we look up the symbols uh, and uh, source files uh, and possibly uh, if we uh, know we are running under DDB we can generate the trap event uh, so uh, DDB can be invoked uh, which is nice because then suddenly Valgrind becomes interactive and you uh, can inspect all the events that uh, are uh, uh, recorded. And finally, we can give, uh, when the, the program exits, we can show a full summary uh, and uh, uh, change the application exit code so you know something uh, went wrong in a, uh, a CI context, for example. Uh, so, um, 
uh, uh, the recording counting errors. Um, have we seen this before? This is uh, uh, an, an example where we uh, read, uh, 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 we have an invalid read. Um, and in this case, the invalid read occurred here in, uh, on line 38. Uh, uh, what's important is the address for uh, for Vraukens, but uh, uh, the human readable form is important for uh, uh, well humans, <laughs> us. And in this in this case, it has a event associated with where that block was allocated, uh, and we even report it's zero bytes after, so it's just after the block. Um, here it is interesting, I should have shown uh, the program, but uh, it might be a for loop that runs past uh, 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 the memory block. And they all uh, happen here, so we only report the first read after the block. We, uh, and uh, we remind ourselves that uh, the code <laughs> reads or writes after that block for maybe a couple more, but uh, uh, we only report uh, this one. Uh, another example of associated other events is the track origins is true uh, flag with uh, tracks where all the undefined values were originally uh, recorded. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, reporting an event depends on the execution context and most other things don't uh, 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 count for. Uh, most other things that make an error slightly different don't count, but we still count the errors. Did that make sense? <laughs> um, so for for suppressions, um, uh, 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 what's interesting is uh, that uh, we have to compare it uh, with the human readable form. Um, luckily, uh, they can be uh, generated while being reported and. Uh, that uh, looks like this. Uh, in this case, it just uh, 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 prints the functions uh, 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 that the execution context has, uh, and it has a the, the the kind is an address read of one byte uh, uh, for a a bad address read of one byte, and you can give give it a name. Uh, uh, it, to, uh, to make more uh, generic uh, suppressions, you can, uh, uh, besides functions, also say it occurred in a, a specific object file or uh, uh, in a source file, a line number. Uh, you can uh, introduce uh, zero or one uh, wildcard frames uh, in your source suppression and uh, all names can have wildcards in them. Um, right, so if we finally decide to uh, uh, report an error, uh, 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 we, we try to give as much information as possible. Uh, so it is not just the event that we show here, we show uh, 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 that the, the, the buffer that we give to a system call has some uninitialized bytes. Uh, and we also uh, associate it with the uh, event where that block was allocated and if we're using uh, a track origin and uh, also where the initial in uninitialized value was uh, created. In this case, it was stack allocated and probably assigned to uh, uh, the block. 
uh, it can also be shown in XML format. At first, I was really proud that it is really simple, and then I saw David's talk about uh, errors in HTML and uh, Sharif, and uh, it's not as nice in Velcant. <laughs> you still uh, basically you have to print the XML tags yourself. Uh, but it's 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 nice. Uh, this uh, this actually doesn't show an error, but uh, uh, more how Falcon uh, uh, was uh, 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 started up. Uh, but there are some tools that uh, read this XML format. Um, and finally, uh, when running under GDB. Uh, uh, we can gen uh, generate a sick trap and uh, uh, go into uh, TDB where you can uh, inspect the program. Um, and uh, the nice thing is that inside GDB itself, you can uh, uh, now suddenly interactively uh, uh, list all the events. So in this case, uh, we want to show all reachable memory uh, uh, blocks that haven't been freed yet, uh, which is, I think, super handy. Um, uh, uh, because normally Falcon isn't interactive, you have to run it, and then at the end you see uh, what happened uh, with CDB, it, it suddenly is uh, so much more nicer to use. Uh, right, and uh, at the end, we can actually show all uh, uh, the errors that we suppressed or uh, uh, that uh, occur in the same context. Uh, so uh, in, in, in this case, there were four errors at exactly the same uh, location. Uh, uh, and we can also uh, uh, signal that uh, if you run it with the error, ex error exit code, is some code, then if there were any errors reported, then uh, your program exits with uh, a weird exit code, which is nice if you uh, run it in a, a, a test uh, uh, environment. So what, what we uh, had were all these events and errors which were tool-bound, so every uh, uh, tool had its own events uh, and reported errors. Um, uh, uh, and we made it more uh, generic uh, so that you can have core errors, which are tool independent. Uh, the kind of simple trick we used was to have core errors be negative numbers, uh, uh, because all the tools use positive numbers. Uh, uh, we also made it so, so uh, that you can report events outside the program where the context is null. Um, I think we were proud of that when we thought of it, and now we're not completely sure <laughs> whether that is a, a really good idea, but it, it helped with uh, reporting some events uh, that we found with file descriptors. Um, and basically, it's just if you want to report new kinds of errors, you have to uh, implement eight new callbacks. And most of them already do the right thing. Uh, it's just that you can uh, 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 show extra information uh, or uh, suppress against extra information. So this was the bug that triggers us to think, hey, we need a tool to detect this. Um, 
this took us months to find, and probably if you look at it now, you immediately see what uh, 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 the issue is. Uh, but uh, that's probably because now we know that there's a bug in this code. Do you want to explain the rest? I don't know how to put this on. <laughs> no, I have the same thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, is it like this? <laughs> uh, okay, so like this bug, so it means nothing if you don't use threads, but uh, in multi-threaded program, it causes uh, bad things, and so this motivated us to, yeah, it motivated us to add uh, better tracking of uh, file descriptors to Valgrin. So file descriptors are a bit like other resources. For example, like memory, you create them with some, some syscall uh, in the same fashion as you allocate memory. And then you want to destroy them at the end. And you don't want to use them after they are destroyed. You don't want to use them when you haven't created them. And you don't want to close them several times. Uh, it's uh, similar to malloc, it's similar to pointers. You don't want to free pointers several times. You don't want to use memory that is not yours. So we decided that that we we will track uh, file descriptors with Valgrind. Uh, we already had uh, track FD's options already, but we wasn't given any backtraces. So before, Walgreen well, wouldn't tell you where you opened your file descriptor, where you close it, or, uh, or where you misused it. And now it's possible. So for tracking file descriptors, we are using track FDCS. There is a modification of it, which is called track FDS all. So your file descriptors, you inherited it, or you created by some syscall. And you can close it by using close or newer close range, where you can close a range of file descriptors. Uh, so we are recording uh, those sys when those syscalls are used, we are recording that where, where it happened. And then if you are trying to misuse the file descriptor, we will let you know. The close syscall can actually fail uh, it can be interrupted by some signal and return the error code, but Linux kernel will always release the file descriptors even if uh, close will fail. So on Linux, most of the Linux, like most of the code is relying on that. And uh, people rarely check what close returns or if it returns anything. And uh, I linked some article about this problematic. If anybody is interested, you can read that. Also, there is kind of new kind of close, which is called close range, when you can close a range of file descriptors. So, how you can misuse file descriptors? So, you can use too high file descriptors. So, Valgrind is checking a limit. So, uh, and because Valgrind also is using file descriptors itself and it doesn't want to mess with yours. So we are checking which descriptors are allowed to use for you. And 
then we check if you're trying to use something higher and it's clearly wrong. Also, if you are using negative file descriptor, it's also wrong. So we will let you know where are you using it. Here is the similar example. We are using negative file descriptor and here is the backtrace. So we would like to implement uh, a fun uh, so now if you will use a file descriptor that you haven't opened or inherited, we won't warn you yet, but we want to do this soon. <laughs> Here I have an example of how we will warn you if you'll double close something. So originally you opened the file descriptors here and then you already closed it once and now you are trying to close it for the second time. I think it's the same. <laughs> also, you cannot close file descriptors, so you will leak it, like memory, and we will also warn you about that. But there are uh, so usually you don't want usually you don't want to close standard input, output, and standard error. And you, you, we normally don't want to warn you about that. But if you want, some sometimes you wanted to know everything. And in that case, you will use track FDs all instead of track FDs yes. If you'll do that, we'll warn you about that you haven't closed the standard in, out, and error. But the problem is that this is not suppressible. So if you are using Valgrind for testing and you want to end with no errors, this is a problem because you can't suppress this. So here is an example of uh, how you will interact with Valgrind through GDB. So you'll start Valgrind from inside GDB. So here you can see VGDB, which is acting as, as a GDB server. And the VGDB will start Valgrind. And so you started GDB with some program you are debugging. And then you'll st start Valgrind. And when something wrong will occur, Valgrind will send you back SIGTRAP uh, signal and GDB will stop execution of your program. And after that, you can interact with Valgrind uh, with monitor commands. Uh, monitor commands are not specific to Valgrind. It's, uh, you can use them with any GDB server, or maybe not any, but it's a thing that you can use with GDB server. Uh, if you type monitor help when using them with Valgrind, you'll, we will get, uh, let you know what's possible, what commands are possible. So here you can ask about open file descriptors at this point. So again, suppression. So if you are using Valgrind for testing and you uh, don't want to have any er any known errors reported, you can write a suppression file. And with this command, you will generate uh, suppressions. So Valgrind su will suggest how to create this suppression file. And then you'll use it with Valgrind. And uh, you'll include any false positive or known errors there. So you won't be warned about them. Another. Uh, another handy thing for testing is error exit code. Uh, if you'll set exit error exit code, uh, if any error occur, Valgrind will return this error code. So for CI, I think it's good. Here is an example of using XML output. So we want to track file descriptors. We want to uh, we want XML output and XML FD 
to means that you want it to be printed to standard error. You can, of course, print this to the file. So here you, you can see the backtrace, but in XML format. I think XML format is used by Eclipse, and uh, Eclipse is still used. I googled that, and Eclipse is still used more than uh, oh, Microsoft Visual Studio, <laughs> which surprised me, to be honest. I thought it's the other way around. So the, there is a summary of what we, what we have done, but we've mainly done uh, that, that if you are using uh, track FD's option, we will show you the backtrace. So you, you'll know when you open the descript file descriptors, when you close it, when you misuse it. Uh, to do that, we implemented this ba bad FD extra core error, which is not tied to any Valgrin tool. It's, it's none, none tool is using it now. Also, uh, we made it possible to uh, output our uh, bad FD's errors to XML output, which I think is, is useful. And also we added a lot of tests for these new features. So the, the conclusion is, well, Grint is awesome, please use it. <laughs> but uh, the problem is that uh, Valgrind actually makes the execution of your program slower. So maybe, uh, maybe uh, this file descriptor tracking can be used with some, or can be implemented to some something more lightweight. Maybe, I don't know, maybe a trace. So we was also thinking about uh, extending this to some other resources. If, if you, if anybody of you is interested, you can tell us, and we will do that. Uh, uh, so thank you for your attention. Uh, questions? Um, I may have a question regarding the errors. You know, uh, Maybe it's going to be a bit, a bit longer, but uh, uh, you were, uh, Mark, you were using the word uh, error and event like interchangeably. And uh, you said, okay, you have this uh, error uh, manager and it's really slow. You know? And uh, my question is, what about warnings? Let's just say I don't want uh, in GDB to stop on the on it. You know, I just want the user uh, to let know that error happened. I want something lightweight, and I would want something like error on once. I want the duplication, right? Uh, I'm gonna tell you an example. Like uh, I implemented this uh, syscall that was uh, quite complicated, and I wanted to catch like uh, misuse of API, like illegal combination of arguments. And I wanted to bargain to warn on it uh, and warn on it once. And from what I understood, that this error manager wouldn't help me. Is there some uh, some uh, alternative, or uh, is it something like warn on once in Valgrind? Uh, um, so the error manager will help you uh, if. The context is the same, uh, so it's it's kind of called with the same cost as tech. Um, but uh, yes, one of the the callbacks that the error manager uh, uses is uh, uh, after it does its own checks. Uh, uh, do you think this is uh, the same error? And you could do that by implementing uh, the callback to always return true. So uh, uh, if you have a, a, a specific, you, you have to invent a, a, a new type. And then for that type, all errors uh, will always be the same. And then uh, if you return true, it will only be uh, report at once. Yeah, so the duplication is not a problem, but uh, if I like I try to debug it via VGDB, it will uh, generate a trap, right? Only the first time. 
only the first yeah. time. So but what, what if I don't want the, the trap? What if I want only the dead application? I want to uh, let the user know that the uh, event had happened, but I don't want to stop on it. Uh, uh, it's the, you you can probably uh, tweak things a bit, but uh, it's it was not designed in it's, that it way. It was not yeah. designed. It was designed to uh, uh, you suppress it and then no action is. No further actions are taken. Yes. Okay, so it's uh, it's not a good uh, thing to do this inside like uh, Cisco wrappers for for this purpose I just described. You know, like uh, illegal combination of arguments that uh, like kernel will will tell you anyway. So the like uh, extra warning from Valgrind will. Yeah. Well, you, you, it 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 kind of depends. I I, I think if you. Uh, useful errors have an error context, and that's the hard part. Uh, if you don't associate any uh, execution context with it, you can do more things, but I don't think it will be very useful then. Yeah, I just want to kind of uh, soft error, you know. I want to let the user know that something is wrong, but it's not critical. No? Okay. Yeah. yeah, thank you. You have to come here for the microphone. So, so the comment about S trace made me curious. Uh, how realistic is it to uh, have the Valgrind uh, error tracking be a, say, a library interface that can be used without running the virtual machine? I, I, I think you could easily write uh, something like uh, the, uh, the, the Falcon Error Manager uh, inside uh, S-Trace. Uh, it would just be work. Uh, and Falcon spent a lot of time making sure execution contexts are generated fastly and uh, can be compared cheaply uh, and only do uh, the symbolizing other things. It, it can be done. Uh, interestingly enough, when I looked at S-Trace, it does know about file descriptors, but not in all cases, and Falcon uh, kind of recognized them anyway already because it, it had to track them already anyway to make sure they weren't trampling on its own. I guess the other thing that comes to mind about that is one, the really nice feature with this is the GDB integration, which I remember there was an effort to have S-Trace and GDB integrate that went nowhere for years just because of lack of review of the patches. Yeah, it, it, it would be nice if S-Trace was its own GDB server, yes. Is there anything uh, complicating uh, if you were to try to run GDB under Valgrind while connecting to Valgrind with GDB and GDB server? Because <laughs> that's one use case I can see myself using this for. I think it should just work, but maybe there are things I'm not thinking about. Uh, I, I'm especially how we generate trap events might interfere with the GDB under GDB under Falcon. I'm I'm not sure. Try it and report bugs. <laughs> so you mentioned that uh, this is based on the none tool for Valgrain, the file descriptor tracking, and that means that there's none of the usual magic about undefined bits and stuff going on, right? That is part of the memcheck tool? No, the, the idea is that it can be used with any tool. Yeah, uh, uh. but what I'm trying to get is, is uh, if I've got five, uh, if I've got descriptor five 
in one context and the file is computed in a different way in another context, then for this file descriptor tracking, it will still be the same descriptor of five. I think the answer is yes, but I'm not completely sure. The, the issue is that uh, if, you, if you use an out, outdated file descriptor that you get from somewhere because you didn't properly clean up your structure or something, and then you might uh, write stuff or read stuff from some other code that also happens to use descriptor 5. And I was wondering if you've got a way to for tra dealing with that. It could be like provenance tracking for integers, probably not realistic, or rewriting the descriptor values to be somewhat random or something like that. Um, no, <laughs> I, I, I don't think we we can do that precisely because what you said it's. It would be tracking integer values, and uh, uh, so uh, no, we 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 have to track uh, concrete uh, values that we have seen being created or seen being destroyed. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, but then you could maybe rewrite the dis you're already re rewriting the descriptors that would touch. Um, Vagrants on descriptors, right? Uh, yes, but what, what, what we do there is uh, we dub them to uh, a high uh, value. Like uh, Alexandra explained, so what Vagrant actually does is it uh, pretends the uh, file limit, uh, 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 the R limit, is lower for mm -hmm. the tool, and then uh, all Valkyrie's own descriptors are uh, using values that are above uh, the application's R limit. Okay. Yeah, I, I still think that randomizing the descriptors and then dealing with some corner cases would still be interesting for finding that. Oh, right. So you, you, you kind of want to Yes, that if a new file descriptor is because uh, you're using created, it's really designed for reuse because of that fork and close and dub, not do yeah. but dub, uh, then, and if we could get that to work. Yeah, so you could do that, but the problem is that there are programs that rely on getting the lowest file descriptor mm -hmm. number that is available. So. Um, yeah, you, you you can probably Do it. play with it, but I'm 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 not sure programs are ready for it. I think as long as the programs don't close descriptors zero one two, they might be ready for it. Okay. okay. Yeah. So special case. Zero, one, two, because you always do that. And then for it. other file descriptors, if a new one is created, you create a random number. Yeah, for something that. like that. It might be interesting to see. I mean, if you've got the building blocks for that, it might be an interesting experiment. If yes, have, I, I, I think I can experiment with that. I have a comp only peripherally related question. Do we still have time? Yeah, 12 minutes. OK, then I will make, try and make it quick. Um, the other question is, um, some system calls that use file descriptors can actually call back in the running application for implementing that file descriptor operation. And I managed to write an application like that for glyphsy testing, and it obviously doesn't work under Vagrant because it self uh, deadlocks because the kernel never makes progress on that system call for some reason. I suspect the threat that is handling the kernel response is suspended by Valgrind and not actually running, so we are kind of stuck. Yes, and we do have some way of indicating uh, a, a system call can block, and I think that's not complete, or when you use fuse, then... Yes, it's fuse. <laughs> then 
we don't expect some system calls to block. So um, yeah, it's fstat or something that 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 is usually not interceptable. So right, and it's it's really convenient providing file system tests if uh, you can just debug everything together in one process. Yeah. So there's a few small points that's handled by a separate thread. That's an, just an interesting model for writing these kind of tests. Yeah. So it would be nice to... to I, I, I can look at it, but I'm not sure I'm, I'm able to find it. <laughs> where, where we are going wrong with... Uh, uh, the Syscom... Syscom, Syscom the, blocking, uh, yeah. That, that looking, yeah. Okay, thank you. Do you want to? I stop. Uh, just a casual user here. I was just uh, wondering why it's not on by default for the the default tool. Is it like visibly slower, or there's some other reason? Uh, the reason is uh, that um, uh, most programs uh, make file descriptor mistakes, uh, uh, especially uh, what a lot of uh, uh, programs do is I close this file descriptor and I give it the, the variable uh, 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 the value minus one, and then I just expect if I use this file descriptor, everything fails, and I mean it, which is stupid. Fix your program, but a lot of programs do that, and uh, a lot of programs kind of like uh, with memory don't really clean them up, uh, so you would always get errors about leaking file descriptors. And yes, we could have yet another option. Track FDs is only faults, not leaks, but we didn't. Also, time to escape to a different talk. Yeah, it's done. Thank you.